class. I am back to do SCP tier listing with uh, my friends and SCP crew, Dr. Rattler, Snally Gaster, and Snally Gosser. And I on... feel dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> Good welcome. <laughs> Why inside? You ever uh, seen a picture of a blobfish that's like been taken into the upper ocean? That's how I that, feel right now. That, that's the the that's the picture most see. Well, yeah, true, but still, that's how I feel right now. Oh. You feel like you've been crushed until all you look like is jelly personified with a face. <laughs> no, I feel I feel like there's I I feel like my innards have been evolved to have an extreme amount of pressure, so when I'm taken out of being under pressure, it just starts to expand. I don't know what it means, either. <laughs> well, you may crushed jelly but you'll be a whatever the hell you are to me. <laughs> Back. Now, for a first... What? Session. Wait, what? I can't... <laughs> Nally Gaster, can I? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what? <laughs> just... I can't exactly describe a Snally Gaster. Can I? <laughs> Hetcha is Snally Gaster. <laughs> I said... Gaster, not Goster. <laughs> Alright, so. I'm more confused than ever. <laughs> anyway, let's, get, let's start oh, with yeah. the fir first SCP. By, by the way, you're not streaming in Discord. Oh, right. My bad. By the there way, Twitch go. is being a taint again. Don't worry, I I'm streaming in Discord. <laughs> you can watch it from Discord. You don't have to watch oh, you... from Twitch. Oh yeah, but if I'm not watching it from Twitch, then I don't get anomalies. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, as for the first SCP, SCP-952 is an anomalous subgenre of math rock known as NP rock, defined primarily by a specific arrangement of instrumental configurations, subject matter, and esoteric musical technique. Evidence suggests that the accumulation of these components is the cause of SB952's anomalous properties. Upon listening to an SB952 composition, subjects will instantly identify SB952 as a distinctive music genre. Furthermore, periodic listening creates further anomalous effects. Following one week of periodic listening, subjects with musical experience learn how to recreate SCP-952 compositions. After four weeks of periodic listening, subjects with musical experience will find themselves unable to perform any musical piece outside of SCP-952. From week 4 onward, subjects undergo significant changes in personality, such, as, such changes differ between subjects. However, in all cases, cases, it's been observed that existing romantic relationships become completely untenable. From week 12 onward, listening to in, any non sp 952 composition produces marked distress in subjects. The earliest known instance of SP-952 appears to have been Highway Ash, an album released by a band known as House of Spades in 20 Redacted. As, a, as of September 28, 20 Redacted, it's estimated that at least Redacted SP-952 compositions re remain uncontained. Oh. There you go. That's SP-952. So basically, it's just a music composition that slowly takes over your mind to only play that music and only like that music. 
basically. And then you turn into a jerkwad so that no one loves you. Yeah. In other words, you unfortunately become John Lennon. What? <laughs> that was a really mean joke. The thing joke. is, I don't see this as dangerous as much. Because it takes an extremely long amount of time. Like, you have to literally yeah. listen to this for a week to take in a full effect. Well, periodically. Yeah, periodically for a week. Yeah. And that's a lot. And even then, it's like, and even then, all it actually, uh, like, the worst case scenario is the entire world gets boring because there's nothing but a single music genre. Like, no, I, I don't see this thing killing anyone. Yeah. Unless, of course, we include the potential of individuals committing auto homicide because they want something other than this type of music. Right. I could see, but point being, I'd say this doesn't deserve, does this deserve a spood tier? I don't think this deserves a spood tier. No, I'm just, I'm thinking just reassigned because yeah, it, it seems more like a Euclid than Oh, hold on. I have two. I have two windows open. Oh. So I have to do something real quick. Uh -huh. Hold on. Okay. I had to take my mouse away for a second. So I can actually have my mouse and see it. Because apparently for, if you have two windows open, you literally can't have your mouse. But yeah, I can see why, uh, why this is a Keter. Because, like, like it does spread very slowly, yeah. but... The uncontained instances uh, means that, effectively, those are uh, albums or songs that are in this genre that probably exist on the internet, which means it's incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to get rid of it all. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is, it is nearly inevitable for all of the world to become boring. <laughs> but you know what? That's just... That's my mood right now, so... Seems appropriate. Hatchet has been affected by SP-952. I haven't been... Affected by SC any SCP, I've been affected by low dopamine levels. Ah, uh, fair. <laughs> hmm. So everyone's in agreement with reassigned? Silence means yes, I take it. I yeah. said yeah. Yeah, alright. Uh, yeah. Alright. Next one. Is SCP-953. SCP-953 is a female red fox, approximately eight kilograms in weight, with a spine that splits around the twenty-sixth vertebra into nine separate tails. Subject displays polymorphic properties, however, allowing it to take the form of various other objects and beings. The subject will display some vol uh, volplane aspect in all of its alternate forms. This can serve to identify the subject should it attempt to disguise, although SP-953 will attempt to conceal its tails through clothing and other methods. In addition to polymorphic abilities, SP-953 displays moderate level uh, psionic abilities, namely suggestion and uh, te uh, telepathy. Namely, suggestion is a power? No, na namely as in... Oh. 
like they're naming what the powers are. Oh. Okay, I was getting confused. <laughs> I confused my own self. Anyway. Although insufficient to fool an outsider server, an entranced subject can be convinced of a variety of false facts, including the nature of SB953, its own nature, and the nature of things around it. SB953 has used this in the past to, among other things, deceive police officers, investigating reports of loud screams from a hotel room, convince a mother to roast and eat her own child, carry out acts of Dead people fun time, I'm not saying the actual word, upon Agent Ramsey's fiance <laughs> in full view of said agent, and succeed in the systematic murder of 27 attendees of FurryCon uh, 2000 redacted. Do you, do you actually think that Steam? Steam? That Twitch is going to care about that word? Probably not. Okay, so the word's necrophilia. No, I was meaning Yifcon. Oh. Well, I already said it. <laughs> yeah, well, I said it. Yes, it's it's called Yifcon. <laughs> it's so fucked up with the necrophilia. It's so fucked up with the necrophilia things he did right in front of the person's husband. And... He hates furry. Anyway, that's you want me to read the addendums? Uh if I remember correctly, the addendums are very long. Oh, three are short. One is it is three paragraphs. The others are one paragraph. Uh, okay. Then yeah, go ahead. Alright. Addendum one prior history. SCP nine five three has been encountered by the SP Foundation and its predecessors numerous times, with the first encounter having, having taken place in Busan, Korea, shortly after the Second World War. To date, SP-953 has escaped and been recovered six times, resulting in the deaths of redacted SP agents during various incidents. After its latest escape, SP-953 was not heard from for over redacted years, until suddenly resur resurfacing in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on June uh, redacted at Yifcon Redacted, which it had been attending in the guise of a furry enthusiast. Before being captured, SB-953 carried out over two dozen mur murders of conventional staff and attendees, more than during any other single event to this date. The mutilated bodies were found to in various places throughout the hotel, including inside a mattress, Hanging from a shower curtain, and severed as the main uh, no, and served as the main course at a hotel banquet. <laughs> Surviving attendees were administered Class A amnestics and released from, from Foundation custody. Foundation personnel assigned to capture SB nine five three after this latest incident noted that the subject appeared listless and apathetic and did not resist capture. No further casualties have resulted from SB-953 from that date. Addendum 2 Special Emergency Order As misidentification of her species tends to violently agitate SB-953, all personnel are hereby ordered to refer her as a Kumiho and not a Kitsune. Personnel asking what the difference is are to be reminded of the difference between a Cherokee Indian, Indian and a New Delhi Indian. O5 redacted. And then number three, personnel staffing revision. Following the unfortunate and completely preventable death of Agent Gallagher, any personnel found to have current or prior ties to the furry or otaku communities are to be immediately reassigned to other projects. O5 redacted. Addendum 4. Folklore Control Procedures. As a reminder, staff assigned to SB-953 are to follow all instructions for interacting with the subject no matter how odd or arbitrary they may seem. Keep in mind that the people in Asia interacted with these beings for centuries before we came onto the scene. What we think of as fairy tales 
or in a revision of special containment procedures, 05 redacted. And that's it. Yeah. I mean, she's basically a mass serial killer, but I, I, like, that's, she's not going to kill an unbelievably exorbitant amount of people, so I think some groups. Yeah. Because she's, uh, not allowed, after all, remember the furry con. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> first, she Nick, literally... first necrophilia, and now cannibalism. Yeah, she That's... killed an entire furry con's worth of people. Well, almost well, no, she... the entire thing. Well, no, she didn't. It was only 20 people. Yeah, because yeah. the people got there before she got more people. She hates furry. She was planning to kill all of them. Oh. I highly doubt that she would be able to kill all of them. She can try. <laughs> like, yeah, she can try. <laughs> and like, the SCP Foundation wants to release her and see if she can do it or wants to. Well, but yeah, but like, my my point being that like, I she to me in my mind, she's basically just a hyped up serial killer. She's an individual that will be able to kill a lot of people if left loose, but okay. ultimately she's just one person. Hold on, there, there, there is something that can weaken SB953. Apparently how they contain it is they have a bunch of open kennels of a Korean Jindo or American Foxhound breeds. Apparently they're, they are entirely afraid of those doggos. Yeah. Either way, yeah. Is it's... to have her locked up or have very specific dogs? Either way, yeah, I'd say just certain groups. Yeah, it's not like a six day two. <laughs> she can't go. You're right. <laughs> she may not have a limit to how many she wants to kill, but that doesn't mean she gets away with it. Yeah. yeah. She has limited means to do her murders. That, and if I remember correctly, the main reason why I compare her to a serial killer is in some of the, like, containment logs that I've listened to reenactments of, she quite literally goes about methodically killing people in a manner that is reminiscent of some serial killers. Like a wild animal. But I don't think she'd like that comparison. Still gonna make it. She's not exactly staring at my face. I don't think I'd get along with this SCP. I wonder why. Is it because she's extremely homicidal? <laughs> oh, that and I would refer to her in animal-like things instead of a highly intelligent yokai that's murderous and well, vindictive well she's not even a yokai uh yokai just means something that's not human well yeah but isn't isn't yokai from japanese lore that's very what what i said that's very fair yeah. yeah, like, literally an aspect of this was uh, she gets pissed off if you call her a kitsune because she, she's from Korea. So Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. In other words... Uh, she doesn't like it when people do the SCP equivalent of asking, where were you really from? <laughs> Seems really 
already have, uh, unlike some other places, they don't have uh, one word for all their creatures. They just have smaller words, which I do not like because technically even the United States has that, but you know, not everyone needs to have that. I mean, America calls them monsters. Ireland calls them fae. Japan calls them yokai, but you know, I agree, I need a term. Yeah. I I like how the S S C P that makes you sh uh <laughs> that makes you shit a lot is also in the same group as as the as this S C P. It makes you Listen. shit the seven layers of hell. <laughs> Listen. 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 Sometimes over the top irritable bowel syndrome is just as terrible as a serial killer. <laughs> it's actually true. It can even be worse, technically. Yeah. Well, something I, I have a feeling agreeing with that would also be the reason why the Kumiho would not like me. <laughs> hey, diarrhea is more dangerous than her. <laughs> yeah. Her hatchet. All right. What? Huh? I said I don't think she'd like you either. No. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, no, because I'm a furry. <laughs> Although I'd kind of like to imagine the reason. She... Oh, sorry. What were you saying? I only said we already we already know what she does to furries. Yeah. the The thing I was gonna say is I I'd like to imagine the reason why she has an issue with furries is she got tired of being hit on by furries, and then she just eventually snapped. <laughs> Too many. She like hot boxes. I'm not sure what else to say about that. Okay. I mean, let's just say she got uh, too many fox calls on the street. Uh, <laughs> probably from men and women, let's be fair. Yes, yeah. most likely. Anyway, Anyway, on to the next SCP. SCP-957 is a humanoid entity currently residing within a house in Redacted, Kentucky. This organism... Not Kentucky. <laughs> this organism uh, measures approximately 2 meters in height and 75 kilograms in weight and appears to be devoid of internal organs as observed via a large opening on its uh, ventral torso. Furthermore, it does not appear to require sleep or nourishment. Interaction with personnel has shown that the entity is capable of speech and is fluent in English, but prefers to talk in a current unknown language. It is not openly hostile towards Foundation personnel, yet often refuses to cooperate with interviews and testing. Attempts to restrain SB-957 for these purposes have been proven ineffective to, due to the entity's disproportionate level of strength. SB-957 will always reside in a house inhabited by a single human, hereby designated SB-957-1. When instance of SB-957-1 that SB-957 is living with dies, the entity will demanifest from the location and reappear in the nearest location that fits the above mentioned requirements. Upon doing this, it will seek out the individual residing there and force the human's body through an apparent portal via its chest cavity 
a receptacle will remain for approximately 4 hours before emerging. After this, SP957-1 will be missing its eyes as well as exhibiting drastic changes to its memory. These individuals will believe that they have been blind all of their life and possess knowledge of braille and living without sight. Additionally, they will be believe that SP957 is a close family member, a dear friend, or a partner in an intimate relationship that, that had been severely burned all over its body. As such, they show affection for the entity but refuse to touch it. Once every month, SP957 will go in, into crowded areas and feign distress due to its blindness. It appears to do this in, in order to deceive people into helping it back to its house. Once SP957-1 has successfully lured a human subject into the building, it will lock the doors, shout, walk to the dining room, and sit down until SP957 addresses it with, after dealing with the human. At this point, SP957 will approach the human, and a black spherical barrier will surround the two subjects. This obstruction is composed of an unknown substance and is apparently impenetrable. The structure usually remains in a place for approximately 5 hours, however it has been noted to demanifest as early as 30 minutes after manifestation, and as late as 27 hours after manifestation. The human normally appears to have undergone extreme physical alteration during this time. In 30% of observed cases, the human is reduced to piles of organs seemingly organized by their respective biological system. SP957 usually then uses these remains to prepare a meal for SP957-1. The other 70% the, the are taken to the fireplace of the house and burned. And there's SP957. Okay, so this is some weird teleporting guy who will find new people, make them blind, and then use that to feed them human. I could call it a guy. It looks more like a horrifying monster thing, but it does look humanoid. I mean, it is a humanoid entity. Yeah. You see, early on into this, I was going to make the joke that uh, this was actually like the, the building that it inhabited. Oh, where, where'd the Aderna go? Uh, they had to, they had a really bad headache and had to head out. Uh. The weird thing is, is is that it's unlike other Keters, it's not hostile to Foundation staff. I mean, there's a decent amount of Keters that aren't hostile, but yeah. It is. If one of the logs are red, it will explain why. Ah, uh, the begin log. There's only one log. Oh. Yeah. I can read it. Alright. SCP-957. How much longer do I have to stay here? Question mark. It'll be a while. Run, brother. Your disguise is working wonderfully, and your unknown war threat is extremely convincing. Much better than redacted. And you still get to talk in our language freely, right? SP-957 True, true. It's just boring and tiresome down here. No wonder unknown please vip destroyed his unknown war threat. These physical, real, unclean forms, bodies, are so restraining, painful. Question mark. Patience, patience. We have to let them watch the few so that the many family, group, can work freely. We will be done with our research, watching, soon enough. Do not worry. Understood. Uh, SP957, understood. Question mark. Excellent. I will speak to you at the next unknown. All lit. Speaking of which, you should create another false scenario again. SP957, yes, sometime soon. I will see you next time. End log. Uh, give me more questions. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck they were saying. That's why I just... <laughs> I feel like 
it feels like it was a way of saying there that was just one of possibly countless of their kind and they're cooperating cooperating with the foundation that one is so many can do that very same thing in other areas of the earth which concerns me well at the same time if like those other ones are doing the exact same thing in other places of the earth i doubt that it would go unnoticed yeah. especially yeah. since this is a log that the scp foundation has you are right but also considering what it said in the log they're probably not doing the same thing they're doing something else we just don't know what it is or i have yeah, another true. theory or the question mark could be an o5 member talking to it and that's why it doesn't say any numbers or names because usually like they don't say anything they usually redact their name yeah mm. it could be that too well then in that case that means that apparently an o5 council member is Making this weird fucking being go around blind people and then serve them human. You really think that's weird for the O5 Council? It's probably not, but it's, <laughs> it's still weird. <laughs> They've done that, worse. It's not weird for them, but it's still fucking I weird. That I don't think this is O5 Council related. If it was, I don't think it would be there in the yeah. log. Yeah. The O5 Council is rarely recorded. To have it recorded on a random as a small SCP log, that wouldn't make sense. I think they're yeah. talking to an outsider. Yeah. yeah. Well, either way, oh, man, that that log makes me very conflicted. <laughs> the, it would have been like only one or a small group, but that makes the danger very... Is it actually one or a small group, or is it, are they just playing nice before something big and horrible happens? Yeah, like, my, my oh. question basically becomes, it like, is this actually, like, I... Food here because it's just a such a big head fuck. Uh, mate. Well, no, because it's still gonna. It's still killing people. It's still <laughs> killing people, but we don't know how many it will eventually get. I mean, at the moment, it sounds like small group or only one because of how few it kills and how. But at the same time, it sounds like it could become something bigger, like literally any day. Well, yeah, but at the same time, that would be what's what's the best way to put it. I feel like that would ultimately still end up being uh basing our rankings upon non-existent information. Oh, you're right. Then I guess small group. Yeah. Certain group, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree there. A creeper fucking blew up my spruce sapling. I will have my vengeance. Also, I couldn't find... Uh, for some reason, Google wouldn't give me a picture of SCP-957, even though there are ones. So it gave me a picture of the SP logo, a logo SP nine five seven number, and a picture of the of a person from the Russian sleep experiment. Uh, <laughs> there, I'm pretty sure there are pictures. There, there are. I double checked. I can, I can probably change it later, but still, why did they put the Russian oh, sleep experiment? Someone, someone made a sculpture. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna just... That doesn't look like the SCP, but I'm not sure why that clicked up when I... Uh... 
I'm guessing you're looking at like the sculpture that's commonly uh associated with the Russian sleep experiment. Uh, I have Hi, no Pika. idea. I'm putting it in stream planning, but I'm also going to that's... put a spoiler over it. Yeah. Because it's creepy. Yeah. Also, I I I got the next SP up. And I've seen its nickname, <laughs> and it's just hilarious to me. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a sculpture that's based upon the Russian sleep experiment, or it's rather, the Russian sleep experiment had to involve no eyeballs. That has eyeballs. Now the Russian sleep. Well, for starters, the Russian sleep experiment. To be clear, because I've seen people get this wrong, it's like the gas. it is a creepy. Well, no, it's yeah, a creepy it's pasta. Pasta. It's not an Like it's not. Yeah. Well, no, the thing the thing I was gonna say is it's not an actual thing because there's people that, like most of the time when I hear people bring it up, it's as if it's an actual thing. But what? It's, yeah, no, it's a creepy pasta. Yeah, people are people are dumb. Point being, uh. That would be, um, uh, like the uh, one of the most common pictures that was associated with that creepy pasta, uh, back in the early days of its existence, were pictures of like a Halloween decoration, and that is a statue that is modeled upon that Halloween decoration that was commonly associated with it. That being the part with no eyes, that's probably because at some point during the story, one of the guys takes out his own eyes, but they start out with eyes. Yeah. Yeah, it was As mainly just testing with the gas. Yeah. As a side note, uh, when I next think to do it, there is an absolutely incredible horror short film that uh, yeah. is an interpretation of the Russian sleep experiment. It is incredibly well made. Plus, yeah. you get to see a plus you get to see a group of Nazi expats get uh torture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, on with the next SCP that has a a hilarious nickname. SCP nine six eight. SCP nine six eight come. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. Now, commonly known as the Tar Baby, SCP-968 appears oh. as a black adhesive high uh, viscosity oil. Currently, yeah. uh, current research explains SCP-968 as a colony of fibrous protozoa working together without any true structure, central nervous system, or endocrine system, despite observations of cellular, cellular coordination. Hello. 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 I oh, hey, that because I just remembered that Hatchet doesn't like lo the lullaby void. It's it's fine. I I can I, I can ignore it. Yeah, I I'll I'll just apply it at, at another time. Don't worry, Jerry. Oh. Yippee. Yeah. Don't wait. Worry. What? Okay. Well, Don't worry, Hatchet. It's a it it it's nothing. It's come. Oh, I you can. Do the lullaby voice. Oh, yeah, I think I should be okay. Well, the thing is, I kind of don't want to do it now because my throat's a little slightly sore and I'd rather not overdo okay. do it. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Pika. <laughs> anyway, similar to the flexing properties of animal muscle, these fibrous protozoa are capable of pulling on one another with combined strength. Specialized flagella along their surfaces allow for gripping of prey in surfaces, but without tendons, ligaments, or skeletal material to support it. SP-968 is incapable of any significant locomotion. The colony hunts by mimicking the appearance of prey or wounded animal to lure other predators to attack it. In the presence of humans, it has learned that mimicking the shape of an incapacitated infant or small child as optimal lore for human beings. Once a snarled prey often 
it exacerbate the situation by struggling against SP968, which serves only to compound the adhesion. The effect is much like quicksand. The exhausted prey is pulled either into a den or underwater to be drowned. SP968 pulls against its prey in opposite directions on both macroscopic and microscopic levels to mechanically dismember its prey until it is torn into small enough fragments to digest on the cellular level. Though SP968 has shown heightened level of intelligence, SP968 appears to have a sing single-minded devotion to feeding and exhibits no other desires. Attempts to freeze SP968 for analysis have proven extremely hazardous. It conducts heat without friction and metabolism, keeping parts of itself from freezing and the frozen parts of SP968 provide a structure for its fibrous tendrils to act against, much like muscle on bone. It is advised not to con continue freezing attempts as SP968 may learn to use the bone structure of its prey to escape or attack Foundation personnel. And that's it. Mm. Apparently, Matt Pet fans are harassing a dude because of a quote unquote mine uh, not minecraft god damn it but now dragon we're not talking about this we're talking about the scp um hmm. <laughs> the scp is literally something that looks like a tar like substance and tries to mimic the appearance of a baby because they know people run to a baby how does it expand like, is it stated? Because it might be, like, certain groups, because, like, the people it's around. If not, like, at worst, city. Yeah, it's... No, it's it's Maybe. definitely just certain groups in my mind. Yeah, certain groups. Because, like... Some people hate kids. Well, Aren't the... Kid? Yeah. Who the fuck... Who do you think I have to deal with a good majority of my time in school? That's actually fair. <laughs> yes. Yes, Pika. Pika is a good example of people who hate children. I think Pika just hates you. <laughs> no. Oh, Pika says stop looking at, at uh my retweets. They're fucking you, penguin. Oh no! I just clicked the the, the trending of Matt Pat, not the quote retweets. So we're all in agree agreement with certain groups. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm gonna look at yeah. Pika's retweets. Pika, you should have said nothing. Like even even if it is like a thing that specifically hunts people. A, it's not like. Well, like, my like brain. It's hazardous, but it's more an opportunistic thing. I.e., if we were to say just leave this thing out in, uh, a wild area, it would focus on animals rather than people. That's my first thought. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, uh, the next SCP is actually a very popular one, uh, the Dream Man. I yes. don't know. If Isn't that a Minecraft YouTuber? Shut the fuck up, dragon. <laughs> I will mute you. Or I'll ask Jerry to mute Dream you. Dream Man is different than Dreamer. Even the names are different. Yeah. I was talking about Dream. Dreamer is dream. Dreamer is never mind. I... Just, just, just continue with the SCP. I and I feel like yeah. Before I... anyway, SCP nine ninety is generally a human male dressed in a Cold War era business suit who appears to Foundation personnel through dreams. Thus far, no Foundation personnel have encountered SCP nine ninety in the real world. If he 
corresponds to an actual human being, we have yet to find him. Presently, there have been no reports of SP-990 appearing on non-Foundation personnel. SP-990 has been appearing to Foundation personnel since data expunged. SP-990's existence came to light when several agents discussing having dreams involving a similar individual. Numerous other agents reported dream sightings of an individual matching the description of SP-990. The phenomenon, uh, the phenomenon did not officially receive SP classification until the aftermath of, of event 99007. Event Log 99007. Agent Redacted failed to report for duty at, at his assigned time. He was instead found in his quarters asleep. Subject had been asleep for roughly 18 hours. All subsequent attempts to wake him have, were successful. unsuccessful. Subject was transported to Medical Bay. After over 40 hours of sleep, Subject awakened in a highly agitated state. Subject reportedly ran through the facility yelling loudly that about the end of the world, even after being heavily sedated, all of his bodily functions remain in a dangerously accelerated state, increased heart rate, high blood pressure, etc. The subject described a man matching the regular appearance of SB 990 According to Dr. Redacted Support, agent described with great detail a series of events that would lead to several tactical nuclear missiles being launched into mid-Europe and Eastern Asia ultimately resulting in the extermination of nearly 98% of the human race and the total collapse of human society. Agent claimed that the information had been outlined to him by SP-990 while he was trapped within his dream. Global Task Force Redacted was dispatched to eliminate the initial threat that would begin to the chain of events. MTF Redacted was successful and the crisis was averted. Agent Redacted, however, did not survive his ordeal and died of shock-like symptoms. Since event 99007, SP-990 has appeared to many Foundation personnel and made similar threats. As of yet, no situation on the scale of event 99007 has occurred. However, SP-990 has successfully predicted the deaths of doctors Redacted, Redacted, and Redacted as well as destruction of Watch Station Epsilon-38 and data expunged. Any threat made by SB-990 should be reported to Foundation authorities regardless of its severity. Foundation personnel are considered free to converse with SB-990 if he should appear to them, and are encouraged to try to obtain information from the subject regarding himself. Additionally, Dr. Redacted has stated that anyone who can determine whether or not SB-990 as a corresponding body somewhere in the world will be well rewarded. And there you go. Uh, yeah, I don't think we need to debate uh, XK. Yeah. Just, just straight up almost caused World War Three. Well, it it told how to prevent it though. Yeah. Fair. That the change of, yeah. So they're technically not evil. If you think about it. Well from the sounds of it, like from what you said, it's less that the entity told that person how to prevent it and more that that person uh like like the person that had talked to it figured out how to prevent it. But I might have misunderstood. All right. It's like it talks about like reporting threats. Yeah, it just reports threats. Yeah, and like, I I guess that could mean more broadly like the fact that that would be a threat to mankind. But the way that I ended up interpreting it is that this thing is threatening people. Mm -hmm. But meh. And the funny thing is, someone made a joke version of this SCP, which is the next one. Oh, for shit's oh, sake. SCP-990-J is the designation for a human male dressed in Tommy Bahama brand clothing that appears to Foundation personnel through dreams. 
So far, no Foundation personnel have encountered SP 990 J in the real world. If he corresponds to an actual human being, we have yet to find him. And because of the aforementioned budget cuts, we probably won't find him. Although SP 990 J has been appearing to Foundation personnel since 1993, his existence as an anomalous entity did not come to light until 2004. In the Foundation Human Resources Department, responded to the original ticket submitted a decade prior. The entity did not receive official classification until the events of Incident 990-1. Incident Log 990-1 Edward J. Redacted, a level, level 1 junior research technician working in the Site-19 anomalous entity intake ward, reportedly failed to clock out for his unpaid lunch, on October 21st, 2005, leading to a formal audit the following day. Camera footage of Redacted revealed he had fallen asleep during this period, yet did not possess any knowledge of having done so, uh, done so insisting he had spent that time doing intake of an entity proceeding to transcribe his conversation with SP990-J for use as evidence in the audit. Update, 10, October 23rd, 2005. As per majority vote of the O5 Council, Redacted will be allowed to retain his wages for time spent asleep on the grounds that he was uh, under the influence of anomalous phenomena, phenomena at that time. Alright, Redacted. Okay, so welcome to Site-19. My name is Edward. I'm a junior technician here, and my my job right now is to get some basic information from you and answer any questions you might have that that uh, have about what you're going through as you transition into long term living here at 19. Uh, 990 J. Oh, so like an interview, Edward. Yeah, more or less. I'm 990 J. Cool, cool. Sounds good to me. Edward. Alright. Please state your name. 990-J. Uh, what about Bobby? Uh, Edward. Bobby, is that your name? 990-J. Yeah, no, wait. How about Phil? Is Phil taken? Edward. Taken? That's not how names work. 990-J. You're right. Bobby is better. Can I go back to Bobby? <laughs> Edward. Bobby is- it is dead. 990-J. You know what? You're gonna hate me, but I don't think I'm feeling Bobby anymore. I said it over and over, and now it doesn't sound like a real name. Bobby. Bob B. Just pick something for me. I'm indecisive. Edward. I literally can't progress the next page until I put something in the field for name. Ed. I'm just gonna put Tommy Bahama because of your shirt. 990. Last for an objectively uncomfortable amount of time. Edward. It really wasn't that funny. 990-J. Actually, while I have you here, can I talk to you about something? It's important. Edward. Uh, sure. 990-J. Great, great. So, listen. Buddy, last year I made $1,800 a week working from the comfort of my own home. Isn't financial independence the best? Edward. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess so. 990-J. Anyway, you seem like a smart guy, and I like that, so I'm going to let you in on this little secret. You can also be making this kind of cash, man. You can have two cars and a mansion too, baby. You, you just have to invest in your future. Invest in Herbalife. Edward laughs nervously. SB 990-J retrieves a case of supplements and a binder from under the table. Edward. Oh shit, you're serious. 990-J. I, I am so serious, Ethan. Edward. It's Ed. 990-J. I am so serious about giving you the opportunities you, you've only dreamed of. Now, I'm a straight shooter. You're a straight shooter. Let's get down to, to brush tacks. I want to... I wanted you to be my prime VIP downline distributor. Can I sign you up for a welcome package or what? Edward. What the fucking MLM? Uh, yes. 
<laughs> it's an MLM. It's almost and not over. Full kind. It's almost over. SB 998-J opens the binder in presentation to Edward. SB 990-J. See, for every distributor you sign up, you get a portion of the of their earnings and their sign of the distributor's earnings and so forth. There is literally no limit to the cash you can make. Edward, this is a pyramid scheme. SP 990-J. A hey, what now? Edward. The pyramid scheme. You know, guy at the top gets the big cheese. Lots of guys make money based on the number of people you recruit under you. I don't even know what your product is. What does it do? 990-J. Herbal Life is ahem, a proprietary blend of antitoxins, enzymes, and essential vitamins, specifically designed to rid the body of toxins and... Edward, I can see you reading off the label. You don't know anything about the products you sell, do you? 990-J. It's organic. It's full of organics. Edward, what does that mean? <laughs> Wait, is that it? <laughs> it says 990-J. Hold on, it says footnote 8. Well, I, I have to go to footnote 8. Hold on. There was more conversation, but the transcriptionist assigned to copying the interview into additional storage was laid off. Essentially, SP990-J continued to pitch Herbalife for several minutes, despite Edward's obvious growing discomfort of the situation. Edward tried to push through by bringing out some... Uh, some Site-19 residency contracts, the le legalese, legal ease of which SB-990-J found highly dis distressing and very airtight. SB-990-J reportedly produced a smoke bomb from an unknown location and quickly threw it at the ground, causing the room to fill with smoke, with Edward waking up shortly after. And yeah, that's it. It's not in the group. Yeah, I feel like unless it got Facebook. I mean, it's I not actually like... the thing is it's not dangerous. It's just a fucking pyramid scheme person. I feel like pyramid schemes are technically dangerous just to certain groups. Yeah, well, like at Facebook the same moms. time. Well, here's here's the big thing. This is all happening in a dream. Yeah. What, <laughs> what actual what actual harm can be done? <laughs> a dream. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. that was okay. Yeah, it's that a joke was all in of a the dream joke. man. This is the joke first of the dream man. Spoon tier, spoon tier. Yeah. Oh, do you want to put an MLM in <laughs> spoon tier? The dream MLM. <laughs> well, it's it's literally not a danger to anyone. Where what else would we put it? Reclassed. Reclassified. Okay. Reclassified is not dangerous. Well, actually, okay. Reclassified, okay. Yeah. Food tier is for things that are, uh, that either we particularly like or is not dangerous, but we want them to stand alone rather than just be with reclassify. Yeah. So yeah, we're gonna throw in reclassify. <laughs> I'll admit I do not like the pyramid scheme FTP. And man, yeah. I I did that went on so long I forgot that was a dream, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. Also, <laughs> um, this next SP also has a voice message that I'll be playing through a microphone, but uh, its nickname is the Creepy Speedo Man. Is a joke, SCP. Okay, thank God. I don't want to know what the creepy Speedo Man does if he was actually dangerous. <laughs> SCP 999 J is an overweight, Caucasian, balding male devoid of all clothing beyond that of a Speedo brand pair of swim briefs. <laughs> Henceforth to be referred to as SCP 999 J 1. SP999-J is capable of teleporting onto any bed, although it appears he prefers them to be occupied. He'll, he will lie there and breathe heavily with his mouth open until the subject awakens, at which point he will look at the subject and then slowly reach his, his hand into SP999-J-1. SP999-J will then pull out some form of non-anomalous object, most commonly a can of surge 
or a generic trading card. That's not what I thought where I was going. <laughs> yeah, I was about to question whether or not I should be talking about this with the child here. Yeah, no, it 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 doesn't get any. It doesn't do anything bad that towards that. Well, in the second addendum, it does. But not in the okay, addendum I'm going to read. I guess, I guess penguins... Uh... Don't worry, I won't read anything bad. Don't worry, I got this. No. Oh. SP-999-J typically appears during periods of attend uh, sleep, copulation, uh, I mean, uh, in urination. What? I I didn't read I I didn't pre-read I didn't pre-read. Population is quite possibly one of the most PG terms you could use for that. I think that's oh. fine. Okay. Plus, it's a scientific term. Oh, okay. Never mind. Anyway, addendum nine nine. Hold on. Addendum nine 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 dash J dash one D dash fifty six thirty eight was planted in a bedroom with microphone attached. SP-999-J appear approximately two hours into D-5638 sleep cycle. The following audio was recorded. Will, will it play? I don't, I don't think we need to hear some neckbeard breathing heavily into his mic. <laughs> you guys get enough of that with me. Apparently, in the, in the bottom of the final addendum, it's uh, addendum 999-J-5. What the fuck is this? 05 redacted. <laughs> oh my god, so I was like, what the fuck are you, did you put in our database? <laughs> uh... But yeah, he attends the I Cannot Talk Anymore about what it does because I already figure out where what time in the be bedroom he likes to appear. I can't um, go any further. I see. Um uh, it's really uncomfortable. <laughs> but I think it's a real time. <laughs> Like, I wouldn't want this shit to happen to me, but I don't think he's any threat. He's just fucking... <laughs> the weird and thing is, when I, I thought he was going to pull out something else, I thought it was going to be something really bad, but no, it's a freaking trading card. <laughs> yeah, trading card or an energy drink. <laughs> or whatever. I also that assumed he was going to pull non-trading cards out. Not shit. We'll call them unmentionables. Yeah, unmentionables. Awesome. Something we will never mention around child. Exactly. Oh, actually, the next SCP I think is one Hatch is gonna like. Is it the Snollygoster? Is that an SCP? No. No, it is. <laughs>